stand by at the top. When it says live, we're live. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our final keynote for today, the first day of our big data conference. And uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to welcome uh, Alex Sankinov to uh, the stage today, the virtual stage. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about Alex. So Alex is a um, an enterprise AI uh, machine learning product manager and evangelist at um, at ServiceNow. And there he leads uh, the implementation and adoption of AI machine learning uh, enterprise wide and enables data driven decisions uh, around the organization. Uh, he spent more than a decade in data and analytics. And he's led analytics teams to focus on things like data strategy, uh, business intelligence, machine learning, uh, experimentation, uh, which is a huge part of this, um, uh, enterprise adoption of uh, AI, which is what we're going to hear about uh, very shortly, and uh, building up the talent that's required to actually deliver that. Um, so his principles are uh, three things. Uh, think big, start small, and scale fast. I like the sound of that, Alex. Um, so I'll now hand over to you to take us through the final presentation for today. So please welcome Alex Sengenov. Thank you for the introduction, Jonas. I'm so happy to be here to share our hard-earned lessons we wish we knew three years ago to make our AI journey easier to embrace enterprise-wide. To do that, I would like you to take you back to January 22nd, 2020, to ServiceNow's sales kickoff event. This is an annual and the most important employee event of the company, where senior leadership team debuts company priorities and go-to-market strategies. This was a historic moment in the 18-year history of ServiceNow, and especially for data and analytics team because this was first time ever the analytics product packed with AI decision-making capabilities was featured and demoed at sales kickoff keynotes. The entire team live right in this arena in Las Vegas and virtually from our global offices were excited and anxiously waiting for the moment to come. This was the most memorable moment for many reasons. And as we were high, giving each other high fives in person. And I'm sure you're curious by now, how did we get there? How did our analytics product land on that stage? And I'm excited to share with you today our journey of designing, building, and launching analytics products that led us right on that stage. If you or your organization sells a service or product, Data can help you and your customers to make decisioning easier and faster. Sales has always been about numbers since the first caveman sold the first wheel. And today, my goal is to leave you with a mindset that will help fast track your AI journey within your organization. So buckle up and let's go. Creating a movement and followers starts with envisioning a future that's achieved through a shared vision. A future that's both exciting and scary in a good way. Our CIO, Chris Betty, challenges us to reimagine our customer and employee experiences every single day. That's both exciting to think about and scary as we embark upon it. To rally our allies, our, part, our partners, our stakeholders towards that common vision, the vision needed to tie directly to our company priorities to achieve that desired outcome. This ensured that our team was aware of their direct contribution to make something remarkable happen. To make sure there was no room for ambiguity across the board. But the vision alone is not enough to act on. 
because it needs a robust strategy that unlocks the path towards the vision and calls for action. And strategy has to and must pave the way forward in creating and adding value to the company. So everyone who's contributing is aware how their contribution is helping to drive change. And now the fun part, it, executing the strategy to make sure the vision becomes a reality. Some of you may be familiar with the phrase, talk the talk and walk the walk, where walk the walk phrase refers to the challenge that we have to prove. Surprisingly, within the data science and AI ML practices, it's quite the opposite of the metaphor that is the challenge, where walking the walk is easier than talking the talk. Let me know if this has happened to you and or within your organization. Have you built an awesome AI engine that predicts, let's say, 90 plus percent accuracy, and yet no one within your organization care to take advantage of it? Do you know why? Do you really know why? We'll talk about that more and share many memories. And I'm sure you're asking by now, uh, well, where do we start? Where do we start our AI journey in driving awareness to bring everybody on board? And I'm glad you asked. By the way, in case you, know, you have any questions, uh, please put them into Q&A uh, section and we'll address them at the end. History is a great teacher. Reflecting back to the last decade, it was all about mobile first innovation decade, where every single company jumped into building and releasing their own mobile apps. And we even coined a term for that. If you could think of anything, chances are there was an app for that. And I firmly believe that this decade is going to be AI first innovation. And I hope we'll coin the term there is an AI engine for that because there are three tailwinds that will make AI a must do and no longer an optional for many industries to come. First, data as a common currency. Amount of data that is available in our fingertips today is simply mind blowing, both as open source and proprietary. Second, compute, compute power or cloud compute power that scales with the volume of data that's being collected and curated. Infrastructure, compute power, frameworks, all, that, all of those to handle large volumes of data in seconds, if not sub-seconds, is there. And there was no stopping here. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. And finally, the bar for customer and consumer experiences and expectations are simply rising. We as consumers <clears throat> expect for things to just work, expect to things to just happen. The virtual gatherings like these is the manifest of it all. When customers need something, chances are they needed it yesterday. And if they run into a problem that needs to be solved, that needs to be solved now. When we order things online, we expect the item to show, to show up in front of our door. If we order a ride, we expect the driver to show up in front of our door and take us to our destination and many more examples like these that you and I as consumers enjoy today. And despite the tragic event of the global pandemic, it's needless to say that it just accelerated the need for digital transformation and AI is at the forefront of it, anticipating user pain points and resolving them even before it happens. Is it that we as consumers use and benefit AI ML enabled experiences in our consumer lives, but yet when we come to work, we shy away from it? Just as everything has to go through a maturity phase, Crawl, walk, run. Adopting AI ML is no different. And analytics maturity has its own stages. 
And the first question we all should be asking ourselves is, do you know what stage your analytics maturity is at? Do your stakeholders know? If the answer is no, that would be the best place to start, to socialize and to be transparent with your team and your stakeholders. As you can see, the higher in the stages you go, the easier and more fun it becomes. And at certain points, you don't have to remind your stakeholders what stage you're in because they will know by then and because they have seen what data can do. And they will get equally excited in pushing the boundaries of what's possible. A couple of key lessons learned to highlight. First, do not mix reporting and analytics, especially if you are earlier in, in the uh, reporting stage. The danger is that using AI ML too early may simply be an overkill when you don't have enough data points to sufficiently use AI ML as intended, and therefore you may lose that golden opportunity in gaining or maintaining your momentum, maybe credibility too. Second, as you go about using different AI ML frameworks and techniques, start simple and get complicated as you get more and more data and more and more context of what needs to be achieved towards that desired outcome. If a use case or a problem needs to be solved with a simple regression and or decision tree, don't start with neural networks. It's simply an overkill. And finally, we talked about talking the talk. In AI ML space, explainability of AI should be so simple that even a fifth grader should understand it. And the challenge today is AI ML explainability technique that is, is too focused on towards data scientists and data people. Well, that leaves 99% of the population in the dark. So keeping that in mind, as you move up in your analytics maturity stages, your vision and your strategy becomes ever exciting and scary. And you need to be the first one to embrace it before calling on others. With so many lessons learned, we're excited on our path towards providing guided and prescriptive analytics at ServiceNow. As we embrace AI-first innovation to offer personalized experiences for every single function and every single role for the entire company, so, they're, so they feel empowered with data-driven decision-making capabilities. Let's take a look. Take marketing. There is so much creativity and content selection that goes behind for just sending one marketing email to that desired persona, target audience, with a message that a marketer feels is relevant. Well, it's a perfect use case for AI to assist in alleviating the pain of the unknowns. But what if you could minimize your unknowns, better identify, better time, and target your personas to engage with, and hand it off to sales to continue that engagement? I mentioned earlier that sales has always been about the numbers since the first caveman sold the first wheel. And there is so much research is involved about the company, about the individual that the seller has to do right before they meet or place the phone call to. And the most important one, there is so much detailed and strategic planning is involved behind the scenes to make sure your customers get the value you promise them. And the question is, how do you know if your customers are happy with your product or services they purchased? This is where guided account management that brings the art and the science of account management together to ensure the value promised becomes the value realized where AI is able to help prioritize 
where your account teams should focus on first, second, third, and so on and so forth, based on that economic, common economic value that provides to the customer. And as you learn the pain points of, of your customers, identify where within the product they're facing challenges, the bottlenecks or <clears throat> challenges to help inform the product management and or the development team. Last but not the least, are your employees happy? Are you enabling your workforce with envisioning where everyone can grow and feel challenged? Do you have a pulse of your workflow to ensure that the work gets done efficient way possible? These are our aspirations as we embark upon enabling guided analytics at ServiceNow. What's yours? Well, we could sit here and envision for many great things to happen and only having a robust strategy that's aligned to your company priorities will drive into execution and bring advocates on board to champion and pioneer to enable those cutting edge thinking. Strategy that's so simple to understand and easy to remember, and it shouldn't feel foreign or intimidating to anyone to follow, starting with your own teams. If there is one thing that the strategy is intended to do, is to attract others to jump on board and be part of the journey in making the future and the vision a reality. Be that mid or senior leaders or individual contributors, remember, exciting and scary because the strategy that calls for action becomes unstoppable. And at ServiceNow, our analytic strategy evolved into five elements. As we made strides along the analytics maturity, that's now primed to help us enable that guided uh, analytics vision. This strategy has worked for us at ServiceNow. Your organization may have the same and or similar components that are relevant and suitable to your needs to achieve the same outcome. And let me explain what each of these elements is intended to enable to give you a better perspective. And also, by the way, for those who would like to learn more, uh, I presented the five pillar of analytics strategy at ServiceNow uh, last year. So feel free to take a look. So the first element is knowledge graph. Think of it as a connected analytics products to arm our customers, partners, and internal roles with the data they need to make decisions. Similar to, let's, uh, let's say Wikipedia, for example, if you are on a customer page or dashboard and you see a partner name, it's connected, hyperlinked to the partner page or dashboard that takes you there directly in context. And now imagine having similar connected assets for every single entity, every single persona, and every single activity within the company. It becomes an instant game changer. <clears throat> Second, AI. Goal, our goal is to enable AI-driven next best action for every single customer and every single employee within the customer journey and employee journey. And more on this topic next. Third is research and insights, where we help guide the organization by proactively monitoring, alerting, and triaging emerging risks by continually curating and acting on a set of data backed, set of insights backed by data. Fourth, analytics and workflows. Every insight that calls to action needs a closed loop digital workflow to complete the task. Workflows that are directly integrated within the knowledge graph of analytics and analytics products is key component that amplifies the value they bring together. Finally, the fifth element is the enterprise data platform that, tr that transforms and helps democratize data through the next generation of internal plus external data at scale. 
and its purpose to serve as a single source of truth for the entire company with quality data, data governance, and integrity in place. Again, these are five elements strategy has worked for us at ServiceNow. I hope you will find uh, your own analytics elements that works for your organization. And in case you're just starting out, well, great news. Here's a blueprint for you. Now, let's deep dive into AI. We all know Rome wasn't built in a day. So start socializing your vision and strategy early and do not expect for things to happen overnight. Socializing the strategy will help you build relationships across the enterprises. And you do, and you do want to go enterprise-wide, sharing the vision and strategy. Otherwise, you would be strategizing in silo, which you do not want to do. And as you go about sharing the vision of how your analytics and AI ML strategy can help enable those decision-making capabilities in your organization, identify early adopters and other forward-thinking leaders and advocates. These are the key words to look for as more of an early uh, validation points. As you go, look for signs where people say, your stakeholders, your users say, I'm familiar with AI ML outcomes. I know what the AI ML strategy is intended to do. I have my use cases, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to implement. I'm getting the value, the most important one. And I love AI ML, which would make them an advocate. And the key lessons learned is simple. Listen and ask calibrated questions. Listen to the questions you are being asked and listen as if your strategy is completely wrong and remain convinced that the future that you are envisioning as if you are absolutely right. These traits that are embedded into ServiceNow's hungry and humble culture, and we take advantage of it. As you are listening for clues, pain points that your audiences share with you, those are the great learning sessions to identify use cases to partner on, to pressure test any hypothesis or heuristics, to take steps towards becoming data-driven decision makers. Once you have your use cases or hypothesis to start with, envision big, start small, and scale fast to make progress. Because by helping just one team to be successful, you will amplify the value your analytics and AI ML team can provide. And before you know it, others will take notice and soon will start coming after you to help make their organization, their teams more successful, which is the outcome you want to see. So we all agree that data is the common currency and foundational in building a successful AI engines, be that internal, external, or the combination of the two to solve any business use cases or business challenges. And having a scalable enterprise data store is the critical element of the analytics strategy. And having a proper general purpose AI platform that can handle that internal and the external facing use cases, along with the capabilities that are platform agnostic is the key component. For example, a general rule of thumb that we use is uh, to help guide our decision in terms of where we would like to deploy the AI engine is determined based on where the majority of data resides today. For instance, if your goal is to build a prediction engine and a third party vendor, let's say, already has 80 to 90% of the data and offers machine learning capability that meets our needs, let's say, we simply bring the remaining 10 to 20% data and help build AI engine there. Unless we can build a more accurate engine internally. Because your focus should be on solving use cases by offering great experiences. Be that mobile, desktop, chat, dashboards, portals, wherever your stakeholders operate. 
And the key lessons learned here was to remain focused on use cases and experiences versus how great the technology and AI engines can be. In other words, forget the tech and focus on delivering awesome AI experiences that is integral part of your user's operating rhythm. Here is how we approach from use case to value, uh, how we approach from use case to providing value as we go about building and deploying AI engines. We dream, ideate, pressure test, and hypothesize on pain points that our stakeholders are facing and how, how would an ideal scenario would look like. We host regular brainstorm sessions with our stakeholders to ruthlessly prioritize and remain focused on our common objectives. Once we validate the use cases and the value and the benefits it brings to the table, we get to work by prototyping and building that minimum viable product, MVP, to ensure that we are on the right track. And we regularly review data profiling because data profiling is where we learn the most about data relationships. Usually it helps to uncover and identify new use cases, which is great. And once, we, once the results are ready, we beta test with small group of users to calibrate for accuracy, to see how it would be used on the ground in reality. This is where we immerse every single AI engine to embrace our hungry and humble culture, to be battle ready. This cycle may repeat at times where we continue to uncover new insights that leads to new uh, use cases. And by the time we are ready to go to launch, it becomes a well thought out AI product that works in harmony, that guides our users every step of the way. Let me give you an example. Back in 2018, we noticed a surge of interest from one of our notable accounts, but sales reps had no idea. And clearly this was a, their blind spot. So we asked, how could we cover their blind spot? So we got to work and built propensity to buy engine to alert sellers when there was a high propensity accounts detected. One insight led to another, and the new use case was, well, which product has the highest signal that led to product recommendation engine? While that was great uh, to identify high propensity account and product recommendation, the, the next one was, who did we want them to call to further the conversation <clears throat> that led to leads scoring engine? And that was great. We wanted to further provide relevant content based on the contact or leads uh, profile and the topics that they were researching that led us to building the content recommendation engine. It was great to churn out one AI engine after another to provide that comprehensive solution when all the models work together in harmony. Can't say it was uh, all planned, a well thought out plan from the beginning, but that is the power that that is the power of data that becomes a gift that keeps on giving by guiding sellers and go to market teams every step of the way. When we are ready, when we are ready <clears throat> and confident with our AI engines, it becomes showtime and ready for prime time. Because this is where real work starts in launching communicating with simple terms that a fifth grader can understand. Provide contextual, human-readable reason codes that helps clarify any doubts users may have. And more on this later. Having said that, having said that, this is where the real job of a data scientist will start as well, after we deploy AI engines into production. And it doesn't end there. After deployment, to ensure that AI engines remain relevant and accurate to continue to create and add value to the company. 
Making AI ML hungry and humble is as simple as one, two, three. We provide an AI output after going through rigorous calibration. We then release the AI output with the system tool platforms where our end users operate to collect their real world experiences and feedback and channel that through data quality control to make sure any feedback that goes into uh, making or improving the AI ML engine is meaningful. And most importantly, it is aligned to the company and product objectives. And also to make sure uh, anything that we collect doesn't become garbage in, garbage out. And now the fun part. Execution. Thomas Edison said it best, vision without execution is hallucination. Earlier, I mentioned that within the metaphor of talk the talk and walk the walk, talking part was the challenge that we needed to prove. How many of us confidently can explain an AI engine to a fifth grader? Here are some of the terminologies to help you jumpstart your surprise non-data science vocabulary. The most common one I see and I hear often is when someone describes AI ML engine as a black box. Instead of explaining what kind of decision does that engine is intended to build, it is built to help and is intended to, uh, to help. Imagine going to your boss and asking for additional funding for this new black box that you and the team are working on. Well, we know, you know how that conversation will go. Uh, or instead of features, observations, use signals, data points. Instead of lift score, use it in an example to show how many times better the results compare. Well, you get the idea for the rest of them. But my favorite, though, is confusion matrix. Isn't that just easier to call it an accuracy matrix? Now, if you're faced with explaining the type of machine learning you're using and or how does that machine learning work, here are some more vocabulary in describing them. And my personal favorite in this one is decision tree on steroids, XGBoost. And by the way, a quick tip, at any time, when you are in doubt, provide an example of one customer or one insight to help explain and bring clarity to put things into perspective. I hope you agree that explainability of AI ML is the cornerstone to make or break your future success. And I have a feeling that I won't be alone using terminologies anymore. Lastly, if you are explaining AI ML to someone completely new to the to this space, then simply show them this picture of a nested Russian doll, dolls starting with AI, where each one becomes a subset of the previous. Now, let's see how these play out in real world. As covered earlier, we always start with our end users in mind and their experiences by identifying who are the key personas of this AI ML engine are going to be. Followed by the key business questions tied in performing their, uh, their job effectively. And then, then we go into deep dive into the challenges they face, the bottlenecks, the mundane tasks they have to do just to make one decision that leads us to defining what does that desired want it and looks and should look like. <clears throat> to put it into perspective, let's take a look at an example. Every company struggles in defining total addressable market, TAM. Whether your organization is small or large, TAM is one of the key metrics that investors look for before investing and TAM is one of the key metrics that a senior leadership team looks at in placing bets into research and development. Resource allocation, 
quota setting among many other user, uh, many other user, uses. And TAM is very easy to get and identify at aggregate and summary levels. For instance, anyone can say, oh yes, uh, certain emerging market is projected to grow into 100 billion in the next five years. Well, that's great. The question is, how do you break that number into something actionable? The key challenge with TAM was calculating it bottoms up. Meaning, if we were to go after a company, company A, and we could sell them everything that we could sell, how much should we expect to get from that? It's important to define and agree to one common definition across your uh, uh, enterprise. One common definition and one common methodology how you arrive at a TAM value that's aligned to your company's objectives. Now, coming back to keeping things simple as we explain AI engines. Have clear one sentence definition of the model that your audience will remember. That's key. When it comes to explaining AI engines, save yourself some time and fancy charts and graphs to keep it simple. Input, process output. That's all you need. Within the input, describe the groups of data that goes into machine learning with few sample of metrics or signals. And depending on the type of framework, ML framework or AI framework that you use, provide insights from data profiling exercise that we talked about earlier and any additional business rules or uh, criteria that you had to apply afterwards. Finally, describe how to read the AI output in one sentence. Again, easy enough for audience to remember and a fifth grader to understand. Here is a sample how one might look like. Group of data that goes in, what happens in the machine learning process, key insights, learnings to highlight, followed by AI output explained in simple terms and validations that you have performed, the team, the, your stakeholders or whatnot. Last but not the least, the success metrics to highlight. If this AI engine were to get deployed into production and used, how much value will this help create and or add? What is the accuracy rate? And how frequently are you going to refresh this AI engine and the granularity of your uh, prediction? And the key lessons learned here to drive this home with your audience is to provide an in-depth example and pressure test that example. Let's take a look. So for example, here is an output of TAM for a global company A, uh, company one. At a glance, you can see which of your product or service has the biggest TAM that you should be focusing on. Since this is a global company, your stakeholders may ask, well, how does this break down into hierarchy, the child accounts, and the whole uh, global company thing? Well, this is where you will reveal your AI engine is so awesome that it can do it bottom up just as easily. Of course, give your audience a moment to digest uh, the numbers, and they will come back with more questions. So they'll ask, well, why is that product five is 10x smaller than product two? And you'd be glad that you included the account hierarchy breakdown down below. By product to call out the areas where AI engine was not able to predict any TAM. This could happen to, due to you know, various reasons. And the most common one could be, especially related to TAM, is the data coverage and availability. Simply put, for certain accounts in certain regions, data is not as easily available. And this would be a great opportunity to humble your AI and invite your stakeholders into calibration. To partner together in beta testing with users by delivering the insights where your users operate. So it's easy for them to collect feedback, to provide feedback, and for you to collect that feedback. For example, they might just uh, finish a great partnership call 
with a CXO at so-and-so company, let's say a, comp a global company one, that TAM is now could be a lot higher than you initially predicted. Well, that would be a great input to capture and feed into the machine learning to make it smarter. And as you run a few cycles of these, incorporating feedback and updating results, it will start to resonate with your stakeholders a lot better. While you continue the beta test with, the, with your users, remember to deep dive into machine learning side, into investigating why TAM is so high or why TAM is so low uh, from your side. By looking at it at the top contributing factors, peer review with your fellow data scientists if those signals hold water and make sense or not. Pressure test. <clears throat> then you may also want to look at the relationship graphs to see how much better do these top contributing factors perform compared to other. Last but not the least, once you identify and ready to share your findings, it's always great practice to produce human readable reason codes or explainability in plain terms, again, that a fifth grader can understand. I hope these real world examples resonated with you all. And to recap, in order for your AI engines to remain relevant, hold your AI ML accountable. With regular accuracy checks, watch out for biases to make sure that there is no one signal that dominates the entire direction of the engine. And the most importantly, continue to improve the explainability. The simpler you can explain with human readable language, the more successful your AI engine is going to be. And the second key component of your AI is making sure that the net outcome of your AI engine have a positive impact to your organization's bottom line. So aligning your AI efforts and use cases that are directly aligned to your company's objectives is very, very important. Finally, in addition to launch communications, newsletters, providing office hours, training support, you name it, deliver AI engines and outputs where your users operate. Focus on your user and stakeholders' needs. Remember, forget the tech and focus on delivering awesome AI-first experiences. Thank you all for being an amazing audience, and I wish you all the best in launching your AI engines at your company's sales kickoff right from that stage. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for that excellent presentation. And I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I think you've highlighted that uh, in the world of data and analytics, uh, the way you communicate what you do is more than half the story. Um, now, this is time for Q&A, and we have about 15 minutes for that. Um, yeah. So audience, please start uh, asking your questions in the Q&A module on your screen. I uh, would love to get some questions for Alex. Uh, right now, there is a compliment in there. Someone said great speech um, and your speech and, you. and the ones we've had today. So uh, the audience obviously appreciates the content. Uh, but if you have questions out there, folks, please uh, don't hold back. Um, let's get them in uh, while we have the time. Now, while we wait for those questions to come in, Alex, um, some of the things that came to mind for me was uh, you talked about uh, you talked about um, finding use cases uh, and um, and and adding value to the organization, showcasing that value, realizing it. But how do you go about actually identifying what those use cases are in the first place with your stakeholders? One and two, what's your mechanism for prioritizing which use cases to work on with your limited capacity? Yes, great question. Uh, first, we identify the use cases through uh, monthly or regular check-ins with our stakeholders, right? Uh, 
if you are within a central or uh, embedded or functional uh, analytics teams, you usually have those check checkpoints you know, with your stakeholders. And those are the great points. That's what I mentioned, you know, listen very carefully for the clues, for the pain points, because the use cases arise from unexpected places. And listening for those clues and or having a, a simple check-ins with uh, even the end user themselves, right? As you uh, sniff through, you know, the data, that identifies you know, the use cases for yourself. In our case, it usually is a partnership. When we go about those uh, monthly check-ins or whatnot, or regular check-ins, we typically uh, propose something, or you know, they usually you know come come with, hey, remember we did that use case, you know, A and B. How about you know this next one, right? Uh, and coming into the prioritization exercise is this is where the value pyramid that I shared uh, becomes important. If we were to enable this, how many users will use it? If the uh, then it becomes the functional. Uh, if we deploy this today, how will this help their organization, the functional teams? And at the end of the day, how does it translate into dollar numbers? Whether that's productivity, uh, efficiency, or uh, just simply you know, saving you know, revenue for the company, right? Uh, and based on the highest value, it becomes a no-brainer and easy discussion with our senior leadership team, as well as from our stakeholders to make sure that, hey, if we do this, we're, we're talking you know, a couple million dollars you know, in savings, efficiency, uh, operational excellence, you name it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I think what you're highlighting to me is that uh, whether we like it or not, everyone works in sales. Yeah. And and we're, we're in our case, uh, selling something that's highly complex that most people don't Correct. have an understanding of, potentially not an appreciation of, and definitely don't have a hands-on technical experience with in many yep. cases. So Correct. it's not just a selling job, it's a difficult one. Uh, now we have a question uh, here uh, from Lasse, and uh, he says, what comes first in the practical world, the envision or the knowledge about what you're capable of delivering or executing um, with AI? I think first comes the company priorities before anything, right? That's why uh, it is very important. Every company has their own must win initiatives for the fiscal year, typically. And as you understand that, then you can work backwards because now you know there is no arguing across the enterprise what the priority should be, right? And as you, uh, depending on the amount of data that is available at your fingertips and how quickly you're able to prove value that anal analytics or AI engines can help provide becomes key component to brainstorm and bring your partners, your functional teams and your stakeholders on board in either defining that strategy and uh, vision together or go with a proposal. Again, it's okay to be wrong. That is part of the learning, right? Fail fast, uh, learn fast and move fast, right? Uh, and if you go with a blank page, it usually comes down to, well, you guys are the experts. Why don't you tell me what, what, what should be done, right? Uh, and you don't want to get caught in that, you know, chicken or egg, you know, uh, component, but rather go with a proposal and, and take it and iterate on it because there is no, you know, a silver bullet in solving anything with a single shot. Uh, so just be open-minded to that uh, iteration process and go from there. Yeah, nice answer. And um, you, you're making me think of uh, another question here, Alex, which is uh, adjacent to all this or to facilitate all this. Yeah. Uh, you have a team behind you. How have you structured that team in terms of of uh, bringing all this very technical work uh, to life through a solution with output, but also communicating that? So. Right. It requires uh, extremely strong technical skills, but also very strong communication skills to execute yes. that as a team. Yeah. So uh, at ServiceNow, the at least here, it, it, the way it worked nicely is the knowledge graph component. So there are functional verticals that we call, right? So we have marketing analytics, sales analytics, finance, uh, you name it, for every uh, product, uh, customer, or whatnot. And then the key components like enterprise AI 
is you know the uh, is horizontal that where we work across the board with every single functional analytics teams like enterprise uh, data platform that needs to be served as a single source of truth for the entire enterprise and research and insights that needs to work uh, that we personally work closely with that that you know keeps a pulse on the enterprise right key metrics to make sure that we are uh, triaging emerging risks so in terms of uh, team structure within the verticals and data scientists, well, you have you know, the product managers, right, who to a degree are focused on uh, selling, as you mentioned, right, or you know, bridging the gap between the uh, technical and non-technical audience, right, uh, as well as data scientists, data engineers, and ML ops, right, who is no and who keeps you know, the uh, M uh, AI engines in motion, you know, going. We also have more of a developers and a BI developers who would take the AI outputs and embed it within their functional needs, right? Uh, and we also have product managers that sit within the verticals where the product managers across the board collaborate. Hey, by the way, this new AI cool, you know, new AI engine is coming live. Uh, where do you see this, you know, being played within your area? That is, you know, where you will amplify, you know, through knowledge graph. Right. If you see a churn, for example, churn rate or a churn score for one customer in customer dashboard, and that customer is also referenced in a sales dashboard, you will see the same number and get back to customer dashboard. Right. Sorry, I'm um, probably you know it's uh, theoretical you know to talk about it without uh, showing it, but um, if anyone has you know questions or, or whatnot, happy to connect on LinkedIn and provide more content. Yeah, and please, uh, audience, we have another few minutes here. So if you have more questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask them. Well, you you talked about um, the comparison of uh, what you called AI first innovation versus uh, the past decade of, uh, of right. the mobile first. Yep. So given that we're in the beginning of this process, where do you think we are going to be at the end of this decade uh, with regards to AI? I believe and I hope that by the end of this decade, uh, simple explainability becomes a no brainer, right? Just as how we use data to slice and dice and create pivots or create visualizations, I hope that we'll get to a point where AI simply becomes a regular uh, just as, as we use in our consumer lives. In consumer lives, I think it's uh, further along uh, in our uh, in being embedded experience or integral part of us, right? It's so easy to call a Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa, you pick your Google, uh, pick your assistant and simply ask basic questions, right? That doesn't exist in the enterprise world, right? Again, there are so many nuances of complexity, but so is in, in, in our consumer lives. And B2C companies somehow were able to get around that. And now it's for the enterprises to turn that ship around, right? A simple metric, like how well is the company doing quarter to date or year to date, shouldn't be a cumbersome and mundane task for any uh, analyst and or senior leadership team to go and hunt for that data. It should simply be in their fingertips, see that, make quick decisions and go off for the day. And that, would be uh, a nirvana. Nice. Yeah, and uh, as I think about it, there are just a small handful of of uh, uh, business to consumer companies that have delivered the vast majority of those sorts of features that you're talking about here. So you're, yes. you're uh, there I mentioned your Apple and your Google and your Amazon yep. and, and all those guys, Microsoft. Correct. Um, but, but yeah, the business to business world doesn't get the same level of service and yeah. and certainly the user experience through a lot of enterprise software is uh, not even near um where we are with the with consumer software anyway that's a, that's a separate discussion sure um now um we've got a few minutes left here um just to add so, one point to your yeah. uh just a later comment in terms of uh, enterprise uh, ad adoption, many folks uh, have the fear of, oh, AI is going to take over my job or AI is going to uh, make me obsolete or whatnot. Those are to some degree anecdotal. 
The reason is, especially in a fast pace that we're in, if you just deploy the AI engine and do not touch it, that AI becomes obsolete to a degree, especially in the business world. Unless you're so well-rounded and build the awesome AI engine that you that you can learn and feature build, you know, all of those components that is simply, I don't want to say impossible, but it's near impossible because especially for, uh, even for scales like ServiceNow, right? Uh, if we launch a new product, well, hey, how do you teach your AI to learn about the new product, right? And how do you teach it when the product uh, starts with three features and now becomes 100 features, right? It's a full-blown platform, right? Or Airbnb, for example, uh, they, were, they started as, you know, a completely different company, and now they are full-blown, you know, travel experience uh, altogether, right? Or imagine, you know, Google, they just started with search engine and now they're, they offer a range of services. Same goes for Apple, right? And you name it. And keeping up with the pace of change requires maintenance, requires uh, keeping AI engines relevant, keeping that uh, relevant to the world. So one thing to hamper on and or educate the users as we go about uh, helping them, it should be to take care of those mundane tasks, bring their consumer life experiences, the great experiences that we take advantage of today as consumers and bring that to life and compare, compare. What if you could do this better? What if you didn't have to do the same Excel pivots or whatnot every single time, every single you know month end or quarter end activities, but rather be that available at your fingertips? Yeah, nice. Thank you for that addition. Now we do have a question here from uh, Schemantas, okay. and um, the question is: If you were an aspiring ML analyst in a growing company with no widespread ML usage, how would you try to get access to collected data so no one could think um, to collect the data, no one could think of possible problems to solve with? Uh, well, if you are not already part of the data analytics team, certainly find partners within that department. Whoever manages your central da uh, data warehouse, right? Or you could get sample data and build it yourself to proof point the value. So there are multiple ways to go about it. But at the end of the day, building the MVP, especially if you're the first one uh, trying to change, the, uh, change direction, it's always to show value. Uh, keep the use case small. Keep it, again, even if you are able to uh, showcase just one customer and you're able to change one variable in making things better, that should be enough to take it to your manager and to your manager's manager and hit, have that uh, broader uh, use case and now and sell them the vision, hey, what if we could do this for the entire customers, for the entire universe? That is essentially becomes the key component they won't believe it unless they see it. Yeah, nice answer. Now, I think we're sort of at the end of uh, questions here. Um, Alex, uh, unless unless anyone wants to sneak in a last question, we could probably fit one in the next minute and a half. Um, but Alex, uh, lastly, where, where can people get in contact with you if uh, they have questions or would like to connect outside this? Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, and that is one place that I would uh, highly would love to connect with everyone. So uh, search me on LinkedIn uh, and would looking forward to connecting with everyone. Yeah, great. I'll, I'll certainly send you a LinkedIn uh, request. I promise you that. Of course. Um, be now, good. Alex, I know you have been up very early because you're in California. Uh, what's the time now? About 6.30 or something like that? In yeah, it's about 6.30 6 a.m. Yes, my day is yeah, just okay. about to begin. Yeah, it's probably about time you get out of bed then uh, under normal yeah. circumstances to start your day. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you go and start your day. And um, you. on behalf of everyone who listened in, thank you so much for a really thorough uh, and really thought-provoking um, presentation that uh, I think inspired a lot of people to to think differently about how they produce outcomes and uh, and communicate those outcomes within organizations. Now, for everyone online, uh, this is the last 
talk of today, but we start again tomorrow. So please make sure you check the conference program and uh, come back tomorrow for even more uh, interesting uh, talks. Uh, Alex, thank you so much and uh, all the best and enjoy your day. Thank you very much. It was great to be here. All right. Bye all.